One question that I have been asked recently is whether or not Tycho can be used to generate photometry of and determine the period of a variable star. And the answer to that question is yes. So I thought I would go ahead and put together a short video to demonstrate this process. So what I have here uh, is a sequence of 512 images. So uh, each of these are 2K by 2K in resolution. 30 seconds in duration. And so what we've got here is basically it's similar to where uh, you would do photometry of a minor planet. So you essentially capture a series of images within this field of view. The object is present uh, on every single image. And you're going to compute the magnitude of that object over time and then hopefully be able to analyze that time period and essentially compute a period. So the difference is that with a variable star, it's actually easier uh, because it is stationary. So uh, with this example here, I've gone ahead and loaded up these images uh, into the image viewer. And what we can do is go ahead and navigate to the location of the star. So go to location. And if you know the right ascension and declination, then you can type in those coordinates here. So I'm going to click OK. So here is the variable star. And as before, you'll want to have a star catalog loaded uh, that you're comfortable working with. So uh, for me, I like to use the Atlas star catalog. Uh, it's very much ideal for photometry. And so this is the Atlas catalog, and I like to use the Sloan R magnitude band. That is the native magnitude band of this catalog. So I'm going to click OK. And what we can do is as if it were a minor planet, we can go ahead and define two markers, uh, two positions. Uh, but in this case, those markers will be identical. So it's stationary in position. So we create marker one, and I create marker two. And that being the case, there's really no motion. So it has a speed essentially of zero uh, arc minutes or arc seconds per minute, and position angle is irrelevant. So we just go ahead and create a photometry set uh, using that information. Now, as I have mentioned in the other tutorial videos, if you do not specify any comparison stars, then Tycho will assume that you want to use automatic comparison stars. So before I generate photometry, I am going to go ahead and manually define comparison stars. You can go to find comp stars from the photometry menu, and this will present a new window here, and you can choose uh, your own comparison stars. So I might, uh, if I want to, I can generate this list of active comparison stars, again, using this comp star finder module. So if I want to just go ahead and populate this list with uh, what appear to be reasonable comp stars, I can go ahead and do that. So I've generated up a list of five comparison stars. And what I'm doing right now is simply generating uh, data uh, on each of these comp stars. And that's going to tell me uh, whether or not they are quality comparison stars. Okay, so uh, this appears to be a, a pretty good comparison star. It has a flat uh, line here. So computed mag over time is uh, consistent. And this is the same with all these other comparison stars. So again, uh, we can go to generate photometry set. And that's going to, using those two markers, it is going to generate uh, magnitude measurements uh, of this object. So we now have one photometry set defined and I can go to graph uh, plot all sets so we only have one photometry set so that's okay and what you can see here is the magnitude over time. So this is over uh, let's go ahead and take a look this is over a four hour total exposure time period. Uh, the total time is 5.27 hours uh, so that would be the actual time span from start to finish is 5.27 hours. So at this point, if we wanted to, we could try to, uh, well, first we might want to go ahead and give it a label. So if you want to, you can type in Galvar1 or whatever the name of your object is. And I can go ahead and click Find Period. And in this case, because this is not a minor planet, uh, we want the fit order to be different. So uh, normally you would choose four 
as the starting fit order for a minor planet. Uh, you might even use a higher order. But uh, for this example, uh, I'm just going to use a fit order of one because we're not searching for a bimodal curve. Uh, we're actually just looking for uh, the uh, period uh, from one peak to valley. So I click find period. And what we have here is a list of candidate periods. And it says that the uh, first uh, candidate period here is 1.029 hours. Now I might want this to be in minutes. Uh, so I can go ahead and switch the time unit to minutes. And now you'll see this update here. So it says 61.74 minutes. And here's the period spectrum. Uh, so you can get an idea of what that looks like. But again, this is a fit order of one. Is, so first order fit. And again, our period here is 61.74 minutes. And that actually compares quite favorably with the submitted period of this variable star. So if you wanted to, you could go to the AAVSO website. And I brought up the information on this variable star. So Galvar1 is the name. And the published period is 60.277 minutes. And as it turns out, that's well within the expected uh, uncertainty, uh, if you will, of this uh, particular object. And the amplitude determined by Tycho, it computes it as being 0.02 uh, magnitudes. So uh, if we compare that again with the published result, uh, here we have uh, magnitude range 11.83, and the amplitude, if you will, of 0.02. So 0.02, again, that matches up with the computation uh, done by Tycho. And 11.83, if I look at the photometry measurements, 11.83 uh, is well within uh, the range of photometry measurements that we have here. So 11.8, uh, and then plus or minus the, the 0.02. And if I wanted to go back to the raw plot, then I can go to the display menu, choose raw plot, and it will uh, go back to this presentation of the magnitude over time. And again, we can have our period list here. So again, uh, Tycho is able to generate high precision photometry, and from this we can determine the period of a variable star. So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.